Kirchhoff's laws of circuits are two very simple rules that are extremely useful in understanding and predicting how circuits behave. With Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law, you pretty much know everything you need to know, or at least have all the tools that you need to understand circuits of all sorts of complexity. Let's look at what they are and what they mean. The first of the laws is the node law, and this says that at any point in a circuit, it doesn't matter where it is, though it's most useful when you're looking at where there's a branch in a circuit, at any point in a circuit, the current coming into that point is equal to the current going out of that point. So in this case, where we've got a node, we've got current I1 coming into the node, and current I2 and I3 coming out of the node. This law arises, it's just an expression of conservation of charge. It's saying that the, that the charge isn't building up anywhere in the circuit. It's not being created or consumed. Current just flows. So we would express this as saying that I1 equals I2 plus I3, or we'll often write this, the current going out as positive and the current coming in as negative. So zero equals I2 plus I3 minus I1 in this case, because the current's going out, I2 and I3 are positive, current coming in, I1, and those have to add up to zero because no charge is being created. This is known as Kirchhoff's current law, or the junction law, or the node law. The second law is an expression of conservation of energy. This says that the potential change around any closed loop in a circuit is zero. Here, the voltage is going up, down, down. So we'd say V minus V1 minus V2 equals zero. So going around the loop, the voltage change is zero. Another way you could write this is to say that for the loop, then the sum of the voltages are the same uh, for the voltages going up the source voltage, and then you add together the voltage drops, V1 and V2 equals the voltage gain V. This is sometimes known as Kirchhoff's voltage law, or the loop law, and you can see why it's called a loop law, because it applies to loops.